There are a couple reasons why you might need to use the message assignment shape, which as we learned earlier always comes inside of a construct message. And so for instance you could make a copy of a message. Let's just say for instance right here we need to make a copy of our purchase order. So what we could do is in the orchestration viewer here we're going to go down to messages and we're going to make a copy of maybe our approved PON. And we'll call this message copy PO. Okay, so in this construct shape, you now want to build the copy. And then there's simply two statements to, to do here. You would say message PO copy or copy PO equals the original message that you want to copy from, which was the approved PO in. And then there's a second option. You basically put the same words and if you want to copy all the promoted fields and all the context, you also do this. Now you could actually, when you see this, I, when I type message copy parentheses, you see I, all these fields could potentially be there. But out of these you know, hundreds of, hundreds of fields, maybe only 10 or 20 of them are actually being used. And so when you say copy star asterisk here, it will copy all the ones that are actually being used from this message to this message. So it's, uh, I'd say, somewhat common to do something like this in a construct shape. Now, actually, it's kind of interesting. This will actually cause a compile error. So let me compile it, and then I'll show you what the error is and what it means. So it's building, and the build failed. And it says use of unconstructed message. So this can happen in several cases, but basically what it means, it can mean two things, is A, you've never constructed a message approved PON, or it can also mean the compiler can't guarantee that you've gone through the logic that constructed a message PO approved in. Okay, so in that, in my case, let me show you what it's doing. So where is the message PO approved in? Remember I have this branch here and the compiler doesn't know whether I'm going to go down the left side of the branch or the right side of the branch. And so the decide shape actually ends right here. I wish I could highlight it anyway, roughly right here. And then I have this construct shape after the branch or after the decide that's trying to use a field or a message that's only built in the left side of the decide shape. So in other words, you can't do that. It's kind of like in C sharp when you have a scope and uh, you, you can only access variables in your scope and then basically over here it's kind of like you're out of scope. So if I move this group statement to here it will compile perfectly. Okay, build succeeded. So if you ever really need to do something like this, what you would have to do is actually build a, a dummy message on both sides of the shape. So let's suppose for some reason we had a strange business need that we really had to do this after the decide shape. And so we showed that there is a compile error here. So the other way to get around the compile error would be to actually construct a dummy message on this side of the shape. So here we could say, uh, for instance, do a transform. And then in the transform, a construct here, you're going to construct the message approved PON. And then you would open this up. And then s oftentimes I find myself making little dummy maps to initialize a message. So I could say map init approved PON. And my source doesn't really matter what it is, but the destination needs to be approved PON. The source, I have to pick something. I can't leave it blank. So I would pick some message I know that I have, which would probably be the first message in the entire orchestration, which is message standard PON. And then it's going to open the mapper utility. And then here, 
to construct the shape, I would basically just use probably a bunch of string concatenate functoids and uh, initialize these fields, if not all the fields. It's kind of a tedious way to do it. So I wish BizTalk actually had a uh, command or something called initialize message. And you could probably actually write a C-sharp to do it, uh, even a generic one. I've just never taken the time to do that. So now we've built at least a partial dummy message here. Let's save that. And so now the compiler actually knows that, okay, on the right side you built the PO approved in message, and on the left side you received a PO approved in message. So now it should also compile. And we got one error. The string concatenate functoid has zero parameters. Okay, so in my little map here, I click the uh, little checkbox to get back to it. What it's telling me is my string concatenate needs at least one parameter. So I have to hit the little square button, and I can either put temp or just leave this blank in order to initialize all these variables. So I close the map, say save, and now I'm going to build that orchestration again. and now my build is successful. So that is one reason you might want to use the message assignment shape. Another reason you sometimes use it is when you want to combine data from different fields. So for instance, I could take this message assignment shape here. If we go back to my map, let's look at that again. No, let's not. Um, yeah, I think it would help you to see it. So I've set the values of these fields to all nothing. And maybe, for instance, I actually want to move some variable in my program to a PO number. Okay, suppose I want to put a dummy PO number there. So right here, like first of all, I've got to remember what message I'm constructing. This is my message I'm constructing. So I put that message name, and I either use the dot syntax or the promoted field syntax. So I'm going to do dot approval info dot and maybe I want to put actually that wasn't what I was thinking. I actually do want to do the one of these. So I want to set PO number equal dummy. Now I could have done that in my map but perhaps I have a variable here you know var, var dummy PO num and it's not possible to access variables inside of a map, at least not your orchestration variables, okay? So this is a case where you might have, uh, so let's make this variable. So we go over here to vars, right click new, and we'll make it a string and maybe we're going to use this variable at 10 different places in our program, so we're just going to call it dummy. Okay, so now we build this kind of a dummy message, and then we actually set the PO num to dummy. So this is a common pattern that you'll see, that you map a message, and then also another issue with maps are, you can actually have more than one input but uh, yeah, I'll probably have to show you that in a separate video. Uh, but oftentimes you just have one input and then your other inputs you would just do here. The only problem with this is this kind of assumes that you have promoted fields or distinguished fields. There is another trick we'll talk about later here called XPath where you can actually XPath to any field in your message whether it's promoted or not. So just to recap in this video we were kind of trying to demonstrate a couple of reasons why you might want to use the message assignment shape. And by the way, a message assignment shape is very similar, well, it is a type of expression, but here's another trick you probably need to know. Um, so normally in our, our program, when we have a decision to make, we use the decide shape. But another trick that I've used quite often is the following. So let's suppose we have a flag, a variable that says whether or not you want to trace or not. So we're going to come over here and we're going to have uh, a variable called trace on. 
or I'll call it vtrace on because I like starting my variables with the same letter and I'll make it a boolean and it's going to be equal to true so now in all my little trace statements like right here I can actually wrap them with an if statement if v trace on then you put your curly brackets Uh, get it right here in a minute. Okay, and then this these lines of code will only execute when the trace is on. So that looks better to me than having tons of decide shape sh decide shapes in your program, one around every single trace, because that, that kind of books up your orchestration. So in something like a trace like this, I would just test to see if that boolean variable was set to true, and only if it's true. Then, of course, you can indent here. If it's true, then you want to write to your trace file. Okay, and let's compile that. Actually, we won't compile it yet. I'll show you one other trick then. Oh, there's two tricks with this. The second one is the IntelliSense does not work inside of a trace. So, you know, if I'm outside of the trace, I click V and hit Control Space, I can see all my variables that start with V. If I'm inside the curly brackets here and I type V, control blank IntelliSense does not work so I think that's kind of a bug but I have no idea if it's on their plan to fix it or not okay the other weird thing is let's take this uh, if trace statement now and let's go down here to our message blocks yeah this is a message assignment shape And let's say for some reason I want to do a trace right inside of here. So let's copy one of my other traces like this. And let's put it right here. Okay, so I've saved that. Now let's do a build. And I'm expecting one error. Okay, well I got three errors, but they're actually related. Okay, so all my errors have to do with the word if and the token and EOF. And if I double click on it, look where it takes me. This is the message assignment shape. So to me this is very strange, but they do not allow if statements and curly braces inside of the assignment shape. Okay, so if I take that out and then recompile again, you see we have no errors. So sometimes of course one error in your program can cause three errors in the compile. So again the moral of that story is you can have if statements inside of some BizTalk expression shapes and this shape here is called, if you, if you look at the uh, what I did before, it's called an expression, just a regular expression shape. Okay, But down here this is actually called a message assignment shape and it has to be inside of a construct message shape. In this shape you are not allowed to have if statements. Okay. So in this video I pretty much talked about the construct message and some of the differences between it and the regular expression shape. And there's really no reason to run this because this is just kind of like dummy code that I've added that really doesn't do anything for a business purpose. It was only to illustrate my points about how to construct a message. So that concludes this video.